Serial killer movies aren't exactly anything new, but the premise of this director video thriller, A Mistress of Disguise Assuming the Identities of a Victims, is a fresh enough concept. Alexandra Paul stars as a small town deputy sheriff named Carrie, whose ex-boyfriend JD becomes involved in both her personal life and investigation into the murders. When the drifter picks up a woman stranded by the roadside, he has no idea she's the chameleon, and as the police piece together the killer's MO, FBI agent Resnick arrives in town to provide background information. The murderess is Elizabeth Burroughs, a woman who recently escaped a mental institute by strangling a nurse. Carrie and JD have a rocky relationship history which doesn't improve when she discovers his involvement with Patricia Harper and that would be the housewife Elizabeth has taken the identity of. And when they're not discussing the case, Carrie and Resnick flirt but this doesn't really go anywhere and in fact Resnick ends up being a forgotten character for the final sequence which allows Carrie and JD to put aside the differences and take down the psycho impersonator. Two honourable mentions for other Mistresses of Disguise this confusing action thriller has a female assassin target Islamic extremists of interest to the US government. The opening scene is well directed and sets up the black clad antagonist as a mysterious and very efficient hit woman. This execution gets the attention of the American ambassador who asks ex-FBI agent Robert Diggs to investigate. And what follows is a muddled mess with several women involved including an English as a foreign language teacher named Vicky and a redhead belly dancer Ursula, who Diggs falls for. Vicky is a patient of Dr. Aaron Khan who likes to draw sketches while he works. There's also two corrupt police detectives who seem like they're going to be important but later disappear without a trace. And while all this is going on, the assassin receives kill orders from a mysterious coin spinning controller. And with the director being Isaac Fiorentine, the assassinations are the best parts of the movie. The highlight is probably a scene where the female sniper lines up a shot and executes a praying man. <laughs> We also get a climatic daring raid on a well guarded compound, many shootouts and an inevitable chase scene with the assassin confronting Diggs. The killer proves to be an expert combatant and the fight is impressive. Sadly this is preceded by an obvious reveal that Vicky Ursula and the assassin are all the same woman with multiple personality disorder. The ambassador is revealed to be the man organising the hits but since he was the only character with the information that's equally unsurprising. And the movie ends with the assassin relocating to Paris at the ambassador's request and Khan, now obsessed with his former patient, is shadowing her. Very little of it makes any sense but the stylish and rather bizarre antagonist earns a mention. This movie is best remembered for being the final Bill Bixit Lou Ferringo appearance as a Marvel comic character and as the title suggests, the hero does die at the end of the film David Banner attempts to cure himself with the help of a sympathetic scientist but falls foul of Eastern European spies out to steal top secret research. The villains blackmail a reluctant Asian named Yasmin, who's an expert thief and mistress of disguise, by threatening to kill a captive sister Bella. So Yasmin gets to work seducing a security guard and acquiring his fingerprints before doing the first of several quick change routines.
Yasmin pulls off a similar trick to obtain a female guard's uniform, then later disguises herself as that same woman to gain access to the lab. This interrupts the doctor's attempt to cure David and accidentally starts a fire. Frustrated with Yasmin's reluctance and failure, the villains decide she's outlived her usefulness, and so for the second half of the film, she works with David and uses her skills to claim revenge on the evil spy leader, Yashenko, and that would be Yasmin's sister who faked the kidnapping. Yushchenko isn't a particularly great villainess and spends most of a little screen time issuing orders for other people to kill. A rushed finale has Yushchenko attempt to escape on a plane, only for the Hulk to get on board and redirect a small arms fire. And that results in an explosion, and while sad music plays in the background, the hero falls to his death on the runway below. In Prey of the Chameleon, things really start to get weird when Patricia, or Elizabeth, dyes her hair black and starts to wear and is happy to take off JD's clothes. He smokes a cigarette and so she does the same. This does creep JD out but not enough to ditch the copycat because he's enjoying sex with her far too much. On a drive through the desert, Elizabeth discovers JD's revolver in his glove box, which he gladly shows off to her, and maybe he shouldn't have because the psycho woman is quite happy to hold up a gas station. Just want to give me all your money. All of it. Seriously. You want to die finding out? Carrie is informed of the robbery soon after that, and she and Resnick are already aware of JD's involvement by now thanks to a bartender's eyewitness statement. And things do get worse for JD when Elizabeth disguises herself as a male, trimming her hair and taping bandages around her chest, adding sunglasses and a cowboy hat, and she's a decent, though not great, male impersonator. Unlike her female victims, Elizabeth keeps JD alive and dumps him in a secluded junkyard. There was a guard dog, but the poor animal got a bullet for barking too loudly. Elizabeth then graduates to armed robbery when she rips off a bank. Freeze! This is the hold-up. Anyone move, you're dead. Now you, you drop your gun and you lie down slowly. Buddy, why don't you put that pistol away before you make this any worse? <laughs> Get some money, okay? Move it! What do you want me to put it in? Well, how about a bag? The killer's becoming trigger happy by now because she shoots a guard on the way out as well. Based on camera footage and body movement, Carrie and the FBI wrongly identify JD as the gunman and by now Elizabeth has taken a female hostage and taken her home and kills her off screen. An FBI agent comes calling, but clearly hasn't read up on the chameleon and a talent for disguise. JD manages to escape and returns to the small town where it all started. Carrie is already back there and not believing her boyfriend's wild tale, handcuffs him to a radiator. JD's story does check out in the end, but Biden Elizabeth has shown up and taken Carrie hostage at gunpoint, and then she has a digger grave while JD desperately tries to free himself. Now, take off your uniform. You can do it now or I can do it when you're dead. Hold it. It's never explained how Elizabeth managed to change her clothes so quickly and by now we're getting down to fairly routine stuff with the old throw the dirt in the face trick and a cat fight then follows. <laughs> Come <laughs> on. 
Carry does eventually gain the advantage. Don't move! No! Sweet ah, you idiot! Give me that! No! 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 No